sponsored by DCP Player, a simple way to view a DCP on any Windows based PC. Perfect. So, uh, going back to the conversion issue, you're re releasing Star Wars in 3D, Jim, you're doing Titanic. What do we have, to, or as an industry or as a filmmaker, what are you doing differently? What, what has to be done in conversion to make it look really great on screen? Are you, are you adding new scenes? Are you changing things? Or, or are you just adding a new dimension? And what is the audience going to see that will be different from 2D? Well, I'm not, I'm not going to, I've already taken a lot of flack for changing the movie. But um, I believe wholeheartedly in what I just said and what Jim was saying and he practiced in Avatar, which is uh, I'm interested in the concept of 3D as something that goes behind the proscenium. And therefore, I don't have to add anything. Yes, I've got quick cutting. I break a lot of rules because the film wasn't made to be a 3D movie. But we've discovered in the conversion that it really doesn't make any difference. We're able to overcome those things and you're still able to watch the movie. We have been working on conversion ever since the last time I was here, which was like eight years ago. And we discovered that it's not really a technical problem, it's a creative problem. It's getting really talented, creative people to work in 3D, because there is an art to 3D. It's not just technical. You need people to be making decisions that are just as important as color timing uh, or um, you know, what a cameraman or a sound person does. You know, there, it's an art form. And you need to get 150, 250, 350 artists who actually can do each shot, just like ILM. The shots are only as good as the person doing the shot, and the movie is only good as the first shot. So you really need, it's a hard bar, but it's an organizational bar for the companies that are doing 3D now, doing conversion. Um, uh, I agree with Jim that conversions, uh, I think we've done the best conversion that can be done today. Uh, because ILM is doing it, we've done a lot of things before, we're very experienced at it, we know, they know every single shot, every single element of every single shot, so we have a certain advantage, but I kind of want to see Jurassic Park in 3D. Yeah, me too. <laughs> let, me, let me slam conversion for a second. Um, we're, <laughs> we're doing Titanic, obviously. So, you know, it sounds like I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth, but I'm really not. Because the thing that you've got to understand is you, you can't, make, can't make an animated movie like the type of stuff that, that you do, Jeffrey, in, in five, six weeks. You know, and you can't convert a movie in five or six weeks. I mean, you can. Certainly people are doing it all the time. It just isn't going to look good. You know, you're not getting 3D. You're getting 2.2D or 2.3D. But more to, more to the point, it's not a question of the amount of stereo that you're getting. It's the type of stereo because it's not real. It's false stereo. Uh, it's made up by people looking at a screen. Uh, there's no photogrammetry, there's no second eye, there's no, there's no uh, data stream from the moment that the, 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 the shot was done to tell you what the true spatial relationship of those objects is. So there, therefore, there's no magic wand, there's no computer program in the world that can look at a two-dimensional image and tell you where everything was in space. Now, a guy sitting at a, at a workstation could say, well, this guy's big and this guy's little. So he's probably not a little guy. He's probably a same size guy farther away. So I'm gonna put him in the background. And then, you know, it, it sort of just goes on and on like that. So you've got, there's no magic wand. Everybody's gotta understand that. There's no kind of magic application, killer app, that can just convert something into 3D. Now, there are all kinds of bells and whistles, little little tools that can you know, detect edges and assist with the rotoscoping process and, and uh, look at, at, at uh, planar, linear perspective and so on, things like that to help. But it still is about people at workstations working for long periods of time, and ideally with the filmmaker or with people who were there. You know, when we're converting Titanic, I remember the set. I could walk around that set blind and tell you where every column was. So I'll be able to help them reconstruct that space. And we have scanned, we scanned the actors for CG shots back then. So we'll be able to texture map the images, those flat images, onto actual scans of, of Kate and Leo's faces and so on. So we'll be able to create continuous depth. The point is it can't be done quickly. And there are only, in my mind, certain films, maybe it's 20 films, maybe it's 50 films, throughout the entire you know, uh, you know, century of, of cinema that, that didn't shoot in 3D that are really worthy of, of this process. And I'm, I'm 
concerned about the things that erode the market. Bad 3D is one of them. And the quickest way to do bad 3D is to quickly convert something to 3D. And I'm saying that, you know, yes, you can mix a movie in post, you can insert these other processes into the post-production chain. I do not believe you can effectively insert the conversion process into the normal post-production chain on a movie, unless you're willing to take six to eight months to do the conversion, to do it right. Now, who wants to sit on their on the interest on their hundred or hundred and fifty million dollar budget for an additional six to eight months? That's going to cost you a hell of a lot more than actually just shooting the movie in three D. So, I think the combination of the cameras getting better, live, you know, tens of thousands of hours of live three D production are going to be coming into people, flooding into people's homes over the next two to three years. Let's think about what the consequences of that are. It's going to get harder and harder to sit in a budget meeting with a head of production at a studio and look them in the eye and say, I don't know how to shoot 3D as, as cost effectively, when everybody everybody in the broadcast world is already doing it. How, how do you make that case? I don't think you can. So, Jeffrey, you've been pretty vocal about this issue. You want to come in? Um, I'm looking forward to seeing both of these movies uh, uh, converted. <coughs> uh, uh, I, I, uh, I have to say, I, I don't think it's a question of the tools, I think it's a question of the talent uh, that has control of the tools. And uh, the 3D that has been done to date that has lowered the high bar, uh, you know, has not had artists um, with their hands on the tools and the results are extremely disappointing and it devalues this amazing, amazing opportunity for all of us. And I think that's why, you know, I, I have been uh, probably, you know, too critical maybe about it because I see, as you're hearing today from, you know, from, from Jim and George, just, we, this is just the beginning of just such an amazing, amazing opportunity for us. And anybody that comes in and tries to cash in for the quick score is gonna screw it up for all of us. And, you know, you disappoint our audiences, you know, once, uh, okay, great, you fooled them, you know, do it twice, you know, shame on us. And uh, so it just would be a travesty for us to take this amazing, amazing opportunity that in fact, uh, you know, offers something so important and so valuable to the exhibition business and most importantly to our customers. Um, and by taking the low road, uh, you know, to sort of mess that opportunity up, so. Well, I think one thing is that the, the audience is listening to Poker Fingers. Uh, uh, hey, so George, I, a, a world where we uh, try to make sound, real, make people realize that sound is very important to the experience, but the audience is listening, and films that have been converted badly, you know, nobody, it doesn't go unnoticed. And I say, if it's taken me seven years with ILM, and a lot of research, a lot of development, working with various companies to try to come up with a plan, uh, you just, you know, and it, and we're, you know, it's taking us a long time. We're actually spending more money than we did on the original Star Wars to do this. It's just not cheap. It's not fast. But if you want to do it right, you can do it right. And that's the thing that, you know, I think ultimately will win the day. So chapter seven will be shot in 3D, right? Yeah. Okay. So you heard it here first. <laughs> By then, it'll be done as a hologram. <laughs> cool. Jeffrey, let's talk about cost for a second. 3D cost. The incremental cost of shooting a movie in 3D, what's, what's different? Uh, well, for us, it uh, was about 10%, $15 million when we started three years ago. Um, it's already, uh, actually, uh, we started to see that cost come down. It's probably about $10 million for a movie today. Uh, We've already sunk the investment in a lot of the tools themselves. Now uh, it is the, you know, having that expertise and staff that Jim is talking about, uh, you know, there at the uh, moment of creation, because that really is the difference is, is, you know, is having great artists at the moment of inception, designing, thinking spatially, thinking uh, cinematically, uh, as beautiful a job as will happen for these two movies, um, designing, conceiving, and creating in 3D is in fact another language. It's a language, but it's a different language. And uh, 
So again, today, the rate of innovation of those tools is for creation is still significant. Um, so we are continuing to invest, uh, you know, meaningful money in that. Um, everybody will benefit. We all share these tools with one another. You know, it was nothing more exciting for our uh, R&D people to be able to show George the things that you know we're working on today, and, um, and 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 all of us have done that with one another, and we'll continue to. But to be specific, the costs of authoring in 3D are coming down. We have seen the we've seen the most expensive uh, 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 version of, of of authoring today, and everything coming now from a filmmaking standpoint is going to make it less expensive and easier and more creative.